Now let's see why some conformations of molecules are higher energy than other conformations. So the angle between atoms on adjacent carbons is called a dihedral angle or a torsional angle. And in this case, the, the angle between these two hydrogens shown in red is 60 degrees. So the angle between atoms on the adjacent carbons. So we've got a hydrogen connected to the front carbon, then the front carbon is connected to the back carbon, then the back carbon has this hydrogen on it. So let's look at that um, side on. So we've got a hydrogen here, okay, uh, and then we've got these two also connected. So we've got a hydrogen coming down, hydrogen coming up, hydrogen coming up. So which two are we talking about on this molecule? We're talking about the angle between this hydrogen and this hydrogen on the uh, wedge. Okay, so that angle is called a torsional angle or dihedral angle and it is 60 degrees in this case. Okay, so notice the angle between this top hydrogen here and the bottom hydrogen here so going straight down is 180 degrees, right? So that's called a torsional angle. So we can do a conformational analysis. We can rotate about this Newman projection, uh, just rotating one of the carbons. So in this case, we're rotating um, the front carbon and leaving the back carbon in place. So as we rotate this front carbon clockwise, we can rotate such that the hydrogen at the top becomes uh, eclipsed or, or lands on top of the hydrogen on the right. So now there's no angle, there's a zero degree angle between those two hydrogens, okay? The staggered conformations or the ones where they're further apart, okay, like the 60 degree one, are more stable or lower in energy than the eclipsed conformation because there's going to be some torsional strain or some repulsion between these adjacent hydrogens on those molecules, okay? And the difference in energy between these two conformations of ethane is 12 kilojoules per mole. So that means every time one of these hydrogen passes the other one, it's 4 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so here, for example, we can do a conformation on, conformational analysis of ethane. As we rotate the back, sorry, as we rotate, which, which ones are we rotating here? We're rotating the front carbon, right? Rotating the front carbon around. So as we rotate the front carbon, this hydrogen is going to approach the back hydrogen, and so the hydrogen on the adjacent carbon. And so here in this first, um, drawing, we have a 180 degree uh, difference between the hydrogens in red. Okay, uh, here at the second carbon, we have this hydrogen in red on top of the adjacent hydrogen on the hydrogen that was 60 degrees away on the adjacent carbon. Okay, so now all of the hydrogens are eclipsed on top of each other. Then as we move that carbon toward the other hydrogen in red, it's going to again uh, um, achieve a 60 degree dihedral angle where they're again staggered. And then as it moves toward that hydrogen, the other red hydrogen where they are now eclipsed on top of each other, then uh, again we have an eclipsed conformation. So basically we have staggered, eclipsed, staggered, eclipsed, staggered, eclipsed, and then staggered. And as we go through all of these conformations, um, as we go through all of these conformations, we have an infinite number of conformations between those, but the staggered and eclipsed conformations are at the extreme. Notice that even though the hydrogens are different. If we numbered these hydrogens or labeled them somehow, they would be different hydrogens. All of these eclipsed conformations are degenerate with each other or have the same energy. 
all of the staggered conformations are degenerate with each other or have the same energy. So we really just have these two extremes as we rotate through all of the possibilities with this molecule. So going from 180 degrees with those two particular hydrogens to 180 degrees again with those two particular hydrogens. We only have these two extremes where all the hydrogens are eclipsed or all of the hydrogens are staggered and everything in between. Okay, so the difference when each of these hydrogens passes each other essentially is four kilojoules per mole because it's 12 kilojoules per mole to go from the eclipse to the staggered conformation. Okay, and that's because of the electron pair repulsion between the eclipsing bonds. So with a difference of 12 kilojoules per mole, at room temperature, 99% of the molecules will be in the staggered conformation. So if we consider propane instead, this is propane where we've got the methyl group on the front and we're looking down those last two carbons. Okay, we can do a torsional analysis as well. So notice we have a lower energy conformation where they're staggered and a higher energy conformation where that methyl group is eclipsed with one of the hydrogens. So those are our two extremes again. Uh, staggered, eclipsed, staggered, eclipsed, staggered, eclipsed, and staggered. The difference between the staggered and eclipsed conformations for propane though is 14 kilojoules per mole because it's higher energy for that methyl group to pass one of the hydrogens because it is larger. So the barrier to rotation for propane is 14 kilojoules per mole, which is two kilojoules per mole more than for ethane. So if each hydrogen-hydrogen eclipsing interaction costs four kilojoules per mole, that total can be sub subtracted from the 14 kilojoules per mole, leaving six kilojoules per mole for that hydrogen-methyl interaction. If we consider the conformational analysis of butane, where we're looking down, so for butane here, we're looking down these two middle carbons where each of the end carbons has a methyl group attached. We have different possibilities. So we have more extremes, okay? So we have, um, where the methyl groups are completely staggered from each other and farther apart. And we have this extreme where the methyl groups are completely on top of each other. Remember, it's higher energy for those methyl groups to pass each other because they're larger, okay? And then we have this other extreme where they're again completely uh, staggered. But we also have these middle extremes where the methyl group is passing a hydrogen, okay? or again where it's passing a hydrogen. And then we have extremes where the methyl groups are staggered against each other, okay? So it, what do you think would be lower energy? Well, it's lowest energy to have those methyl groups further apart, and it's highest energy, so notice our, our, our peak here is higher than these two peaks. It's highest energy to have those methyl groups on top of each other, okay? So it's a little bit higher energy to have the methyl group on a hydrogen, but not quite as high as the methyl groups right on top of each other on those eclipsed conformations. And it's a little bit, it's much better to have the methyl groups furthest apart than it is to have them between the methyl, the our neighboring methyl and the hydrogen, okay? So we have special names for these conformations. When they're completely apart, the methyl groups are completely apart. This is called anti. When the methyl groups are near each other but staggered, this is called gauche, okay? And here we have, so we have two gauche conformations. We have one uh, where they're near each other but staggered on the left and near each other but staggered on the right, okay? But those are both called gauche. So the highest energy conformation for butane results when the methyl groups eclipse one another. So you can see that 
This is 19 kilojoules per mole total for the molecule minus the 8 for the hydrogens. So we get an 11 kilojoule per mole difference for those methyl groups passing each other, which is higher than the hydrogen methyl difference, which was 6 kilojoules per mole. Okay. So you can see that um, here's the relative energy conformation difference. So for the hydrogens next to each other, it's 4. Hydrogen methyl is 6. Methyl methyl is 11. And in the gauche conformation, we still have steric interactions, which is going to be about 3.8. So you can see that we have torsional strain as the hydrogens pass each other, causing this. Torsional strain as the hydrogen passes a methyl, causing this. But as the methyl uh, methyls pass each other, we have even more interactions with sterics because they're pushing each other apart, causing an 11 kilojoules per mole difference. Okay, and we have these steric interactions here where they're gauche, uh, which also is higher energy than just having them anti to each other. So in each of the cases below, we want to identify, we're coming back to that same problem, identify the highest and lowest energy conformations in cases where two or three conformations are degenerate. Draw only one as your answer. So I worked A and B in a previous video. In this video, I'm going to work C and D. So we're going to use Newman projections to predict the highest energy and lowest energy conformations of these molecules and explain why they are the lowest energy, okay? So for C, I'm going to look straight down this bond, this carbon-carbon bond here. So my front carbon I'm going to represent as a dot. So straight down, I've got a methyl group. Up and to my right, again, I have a methyl group. And up and to my left, which would be on a dash here, I have a hydrogen. So looking straight toward the back carbon, the back carbon I draw as a circle. Straight up, I have a methyl group. Okay, and I have down and to my right, I'm going to have a hydrogen that would be on a, a wedge. Down and to my left, I'm going to have another hydrogen that would be on a dash. Okay? So what do you think is going to be the lowest energy conformation? Well, I've got two methyls here, so I can't get away from it. When we, I'm going to have a gauche conformation this way, and if I put that methyl over here, I'm going to have a gauche conformation this way. So let me rotate this methyl all the way over here. So I'm going to keep the front carbon the same in all these cases. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and draw three conformations of the front carbon. Okay, and so for the back carbon, okay, um, I'm going to, on this right one, I'm going to rotate that methyl all the way around to the left. Okay, and what's that going to do with uh, let's call this HA and HB, okay? If I rotate methyl, the methyl group over here, then HA is going to be over here, and HB is going to be up here, okay? So that's another gauche conformation. It's still going to have some interactions there. Now, if I rotate this methyl group over here where HB was, that's going to put HB over here and HA over here. Okay, so I'm rotating around. This is going to be even higher energy because I'm between these two methyl groups. So this is going to be highest. Uh, this is going to be the highest of the staggered conformations, right? But what would be even worse? Even worse would be to have this methyl right on top of the other of another methyl group. So let's go ahead and draw that in. Okay. So if we put a methyl right on top of another methyl. And then we've got two hydrogens on top of the methyl and hydrogen. So it's not really going to matter which is where. Okay. Then this is going to be our highest energy confirmation. Okay. 
So our lowest is going to be where we have a gauche confirmation, which could be here or here. Either of those is lowest. Okay. All right. So next, we're going to do that next molecule. I'm going to go ahead and erase just this bottom part here so that we can have room to draw it. I don't, I don't have any extra slides here on this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw. We're coming straight down this carbon-carbon bond. So my front carbon is going to have an ethyl group straight down. Okay, I'm going to have a methyl up into my left that's on that wedge and a hydrogen up into my right that's on a dash. So for the back carbon, I'm going to have an ethyl straight up. Down into my left, I'm going to have a hydrogen that would be on a dash here. Down into my right, I'll have a hydrogen that would be on a wedge. So you can imagine these ethyl groups are the biggest groups on this molecule. So having them farthest apart is going to be the lowest energy. But if I rotate that back carbon around, so let me go ahead and draw the front carbon in its same conformation. Now let's rotate that back carbon around so that this ethyl group is all the way here on top of this other ethyl. That's going to bring, let's call these HA and HB. It's going to bring HA over here and HB over here on top of the methyl. So this is going to be our highest energy conformation because our largest groups are right on top of each other. Okay, so that's why it's important to understand conformations so we can understand which of our confirmations is going to be higher and lower energy and that will help us to predict um, how reactions may proceed later on.